Hi there, my name is Kate McKenzie and I'm a psychosexual therapist and I'm really pleased to be with you today on Psychology's Facebook Live. It's very exciting to be with you and uh, sorry, moving my camera about to talk about sensuality, how to keep sensuality alive, how to keep sensuality, sexuality, the eroticism in your own life and your life with other people. How do you keep that alive? How do you keep alive? So I'm going to talk to you today about some different ideas. One is what's your daily pleasure practice? How are you including nature, fun, play in your life? Two, what rituals are you creating? Ideally you'd be creating maybe a daily practice and maybe 20 hours a month of rituals that get you in touch with the organic movement of life because uh, eroticism, sensuality, sexuality, connection, they're natural to us, they're, they're part of nature, even spontaneity, even when people talk about, oh we're not spontaneous anymore, look at nature, look at how uh, the starlings fly together or, or have a bird bath and play together, given the right conditions, Given the right situations, play and spontaneity can happen. So I'm going to talk to you about this. Now sometimes people might be saying, oh, you know, I I just don't know. I, 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 I don't feel sensual myself or in my partnership the spontaneity has gone or we don't connect anymore or I don't have a partner and I don't know where to begin on, on allowing myself to have a partner. So just to say again, if you take your tips from nature and look outside and look how each day and each season there are different beautiful things, there are things growing and changing and dying and so allowing yourself to be where you're at and connect with the things that fill you up. So the first thing would be what are your daily practices? I would encourage people to create a pleasure diary where they start to attune to what is it that makes them feel alive, that brings alive their senses, their sensuality of touch, taste, smell, uh, looking, seeing, being, feeling, breathing? Because when we get in touch with our senses, it opens up universes, which brings us into feeling, brings us into being embodied. So what is it that brings you pleasure? Because pleasure, pleasure is very enlivening and it allows that sensuality to open up. If you're not sure, put, don't put any pressure on yourself. Just allow yourself to get yourself a beautiful, uh, a beautiful diary uh, or a beautiful book. It can help if it's pretty. It doesn't matter if it's not. And start to take notes of what are the things like, you know, do what I know. I love going to my local cafe, and they they always have teapots and cups and saucers and. I find that really delightful. I love going to the sea. I love going to uh, nature and trees. I love seeing the birds. I love seeing dogs and connecting with dogs. So what is it that brings you into that sensuality and that aliveness? And if you don't know, start collecting. I love velvet. I love the sun on my skin. I love water. I love having a bath. Once, if you're feeling like you're not in touch with that, you can do very gentle things just to notice what it is you love. And this might build a bit like uh, Julia Cameron's morning pages where you write three pages of anything that's in your mind and you take yourself on a, individually, you take yourself on a, an artist date each week. That could be uh, to somewhere new each week by yourself. So you're dating yourself. And the idea is opening yourself up. And if it feels like you haven't opened yourself up for a while, then you're re-engaging. And this is always a re-engagement of opening yourself up to sensuality, to pleasure. That might be art, it might be painting, it might be music, it might be sport, it might be whatever it is. But as you keep your journal and write and keep each day, maybe three things a day, they can be really little things that uh, start to opening up your pleasure uh, parcels opening up uh, you and it means that you're starting to come out of your head and into your body and your body is this amazing universe um, if you've ever 
uh, done a playful thing where you've taken your partner or someone on a feast of the senses where you've blindfolded them, you've made, made a beautiful room, perhaps with candlelights and music, and you've created uh, a situation where you might make sounds around their ears with some different instruments, you might touch them in different ways with their consent, and then you might feed them like strawberries or plums or nectarines very temptingly around their mouth, teasing them and then letting them taste things or letting them smell lovely smells or or even different uh, different kinds of things. If you've ever done that kind of thing or had that done to you, you know what it's like to have your senses enlivened. And you can do this yourself. People do it by um, putting on a diffuser with smells. They do it lighting a candle, lighting incense. They do it making fires outdoors and talking to the fire, saying all their feelings, releasing, releasing what's in the way so that more can open up. Often we get tense, we're in our head, we get tense, we've got to do so much, but as soon as we allow ourselves to connect with having a walk or writing, a process of letting go, and connecting with things that delight us, whatever delights you. And there are different sorts of pleasure, there's short-term pleasure and there's long-term pleasure. So, so some pleasures are not correct for people, you know, some people if they have sugar, too much sugar, it affects them in not a great way. So that would be a pleasure that might be considered a short-term pleasure. Some people can do a little bit of sugar and, and, and that's lovely for them. And some people, they will have a bit of sugar and then they can't stop. Or they'll have, you know, uh, they can't stop having alcohol. That is a kind of pleasure that might not actually really be a really, a really sustaining pleasure for you. You have to check with yourself. But for some people, they're able to do uh, a little bit of uh, these things and it's a delight for them. So you have to find out what is a sustaining pleasure. It might be going for a walk that really takes you out and looks out and takes you out of your head into your body. And what is uh, um, a short-term pleasure that actually may take you away from your sensuality. Um, so finding out what is really going to work for you and just keeping notes. You're, it's... It's like you're tracking yourself. You're finding out what works for you, what's opening you up, because you are an erotic universal being. And we, just like nature is symbiotic and nature, uh, you know, one animal connects with another animal and different fly feeds on that animal to feed themselves and then the other animal feeds on something else. They, they, they work together. So we do. So when we're filling ourselves with more pleasure, more joy, we bring that to our connections around us, to the people we meet, to our partners, to our families, to friends, to if we go on a walk and we're smiling more because you've practiced uh, feeling joy. It helps with developing your vagal tone, which is the vagus nervous throughout your whole body. And when we're not feeling so good, we're not smiling so much. So we, we, we aren't practiced at smiling. It takes a bit to get into flirting and smiling and getting your erotic energy going. Now this also helps with if you have a partner. So if you're feeling like you've got a partner and you feel like perhaps things have not been so open, so connected, you can start with different places in the partnership. So Barry McCarthy, uh, a wonderful sex therapist, calls this the seven gear sticks. That often people are thinking that um, they're not having um, intercourse, they're not having sexual intercourse, and so therefore there's no sex, there's no eroticism, there's no sensuality. And what he says is you need to think of a relationship in terms of gear sticks. The first gear stick being affection, warmth, appreciation, validation, hugs, hellos, how are you, sensitivity warmth, compliments, affirmations. Ah, oh, you look lovely today. I love those shorts on you, they look fantastic. Thank you so much for doing the washing up, that means so much. And it saved me from doing it, so that was really generous. Or, uh, you know, it could be that your partner really loves sport, but you don't. But you can begin to cross over the bridge, this is the work that I do that comes from Hedy Schleifer, which is the idea 
being able to put your world behind you for a moment and cross over to another person's world and validate them and say, isn't that wonderful that you're watching golf? Thank goodness for golf. <laughs> it's so good that you're watching golf. Because it doesn't have to mean that you love golf, but you can really appreciate how much that means to your partner. And that makes so much difference in building the warmth, building the sensuality, and you can have humour with it. Thank goodness for golf, thank goodness for football. Wow, that's so lovely. It changes the atmosphere. Uh, we all know you can use communication tools, which sound nice, but unless you bring the warmth to it, your partner knows, or the person you're talking to knows, that you don't really feel warm to them, you're just doing it. So bringing that warmth is gear stick one. Affection, warmth, hi, how are you? Before you go straight into a request or a demand, in fact, it can be really important to check out what is your request. Sometimes what happens in partnerships is that we can't wait to get hold of our partner and then we come straight in with a complaint. You aren't doing this, you aren't doing that. Rather than thinking, what I'd really love is to spend some time with you. And making that a request. Do you have some time? Would you be free for a walk on Sunday afternoon? Or would you like a massage? So that's gear stick one. It's affection, validation, affirmation, and creating that situation with the other. That can be uh, warmth with anyone, with anyone in your life. Gear stick two, three is, if you want to get more sensually close, it'd be a more sensual connection. So that might be with consent, more sensual touch. That might be uh, touching them, hugging them, uh, sensually touching them, which might be moving your hand over their body if they would like that and you would like that. It might be that you create a lovely atmosphere. You. Um, suggest a bath together, you might suggest do, giving a massage and you set a whole room up with candles and music and uh, lights and a whole space to do massage. That would be sensuality. Also flirting with them. Oh wow, you look gorgeous. You look lovely in that. You look so handsome. I love your legs. So kind of bringing that sensuality in. It might be that you make them a meal, it might be that you bring touch in, it might be that you bring in lovely smells. Uh, of course, depending what each person likes, because some people really don't like certain smells. So being aware of what's right for each of you. And um, yeah, so gear stick, that's a gear stick one affection, gear stick two, three, sensuality. Gear stick four, five, four and five is eroticism. That would be going another step further. That would be engaging in sexting, flirting, being much more sexy, perhaps dressing up in certain ways, perhaps dating in certain ways, perhaps intimating certain things in certain ways. It would be kissing, it would be snogging, it would be um, having sex menus. You know, I love it when you kiss me on my neck. I love to um, you to do various things to me. I It would be being naked, it would be... Um, dressing up, it might be using different um, textures and uh, tools or different things that enliven the body. You know, you, some will try velvet or, or leather or, or, or metal to touch and enliven. It doesn't have to be painful, it could be. Uh, it's to bring in different flavours of sensuality into the erotic field. So it's kind of moving in that direction. Of course, all these things, if you feeling um, not so confident can take confidence, which is why we build it slowly, with consent, so that it can be playful. Ultimately, we want, we want sensuality to be playful. It is playful. If you look at animals, you look at children who are happy and free, they are playful. They roll and play, and that's what we want to bring in into our connections as adults. You want to bring that playful sweetness in. Gear stick six, is about um, getting more erotic, perhaps with genitals, perhaps with oral play, perhaps with um, exploring all different types of uh, sensuality, sexuality, and gear stick seven would be intercourse. So uh, you can see how uh, if what's so important is that you have daily affection, then building three times a week, 
sensuality, building then eroticism, and building to intercourse. If you're not having intercourse, you might want to think about how are you building. Now, the other thing is, is that there's no hurry. This is not an event, it's a process. So seeing sexuality is not linear, but organic. Seeing it as if you go and have a lovely swim and you're feeling delighted and you bring that kind of energy back to your partner and you're warm to them, that this is already opening the doorways together. Um, and that if people start getting very demanding and demand that things happen, um, it already tramples on the atmosphere. It already makes it difficult for your partner to connect with you because no one likes to be pushed, especially sensually, especially sexually. No one wants to be pushed or pulled or demanded upon unless they like that, unless that's agreed, in which case that's a whole other thing about power play or being submissive and dominant, which also can work for people. That would again be in gear six, five, six, where people agree how they like it to be, sensually. So if you're feeling like you are not feeling very sensual in your own life, um, the key would be looking at your own pleasure needs and your own sensual and sexual values and needs. Everyone's different. Everyone has different needs. And sometimes what happens, what gets tricky is we're hoping if you have a partner or you have more than one partner or whatever it is you have or don't have, we're hoping that person's going to deliver to us. And so we sometimes say, you should this, you should that, rather than I would love this or that, which opens the invitation to whether the person may or may not be able to give that to you. So it's practicing allowing yourself to one, give pleasure to yourself. How much pleasure can you give to yourself? How much can ex you can explore about your body? your sensuality, can you take yourself down the seven gear sticks yourself, opening up the doorways to feeling that erotic vibration, that erotic frequency of feeling joyous, feeling good, feeling your own sense of vulnerability, can you bring that to yourself? And then can you invite your partner in? That might be like I said, inviting them, maybe running them a bath, maybe you're setting a beautiful massage situation where you might massage them, inviting them for a walk, inviting them for a meal. Um, it can be the lovely methods from Betty Martin, which are three minute exercises, where you might do three minutes where you massage or touch their hands in the way that you want to touch their hands. And they might do three minutes of you touching their hands in the way they would like you to touch their hands. And you swap it over so they do it for you. There are so many delightful, delicious ways to bring sensuality in that are gentle, that are soft, that are moment to moment. And if you think about life, it's really how life works. Life really works in a moment to moment process where the seasons change, the day changes, the sun comes up, goes down, time moves. People have all different things in their lives from, you know, having children to illnesses to death to birth to coming out to creating their book or their project or their art. There's so many different movements. And sometimes, you know, you may have a situation where your partner is feeling stressed. They may not feel that they have the same kind of energy uh, to do things that they may have done before. So you can scale it down and make a very sweet meeting that meets the two of you. It doesn't feel so much like pressure. But again, this is really understanding uh, about the two of your worlds and maybe understanding how to communicate, how to open up together and find what is going to work for the two of you. And I teach something called bridging and I also work with something called emotionally focused couples therapy. And it's the idea that when we get stressed, some people fold in and get quieter, or they may get snappy, and some people get louder and may get demanding. And so if either of you are showing signs of distress, paying attention to that, paying attention to what's going on between you. 
not that anyone should be with people who are abusive to them, that's very important, but just starting to find out and pay attention to what's happening with a lot of love, a lot of kindness. And this again can open the doorways up because it's quite a thing to open your heart to yourself and your own sensuality, especially if people have experienced abuse or trauma. Um, and it's quite a thing to open up to someone else's sensuality and what they might want. It's really very complex. It's quite amazing anyone ever gets together or anyone ever allows anyone to come close to them because that folding away of boundaries can feel really vulnerable, really difficult for people. So really embracing yourself with compassion, with love, with gentleness, with sweetness, and following the patterns of nature. Nature is very, very profound, and it's a profound teacher for us. And you would take time to get to know an animal, or if you were learning about gardening, you'd take time, I imagine, to get to know about your garden and what you want to grow. I watched this beautiful documentary, uh, The Octopus, My Teacher, on Netflix, and it was, I'm so moved, so moved by this connection of this man with this octopus. And he took a lot of time to get to know this octopus. And he and the octopus really had a relationship. And it was very, very, very moving. So really, it's like how much time are you giving yourself to have that relationship with you? How much time are you allowing for you to have a sensual life? How much time are you allowing yourself to have an inner life where you're breathing, feeling, connecting, slowing down before you rush off into all the things you have to do? And sometimes I know I, I thought this, oh, if I had two months off straight, then I could be whatever. And what I'm realising is no, if, if uh, it's not about having all the time off or changing everything, it's about the wisdom within, can I soften and allow that breath and that breathing every moment of every day? Can I allow myself to be in nature and go out the door every day? So I suppose my question to you is, what is it that gives you pleasure? What is it that makes you feel alive and open? And what is it that you would be prepared to commit to in your life? that then may open the doors with, if you have a partner or a lover, what is it that you would like to open to with them? And how could you do that in delightful, sweet, inviting ways? So my suggestion is that uh, you allow yourself to think about this and to open to this and to maybe see about creating a vision, a little vision of claiming and declaring your openness to you. Sometimes that's been taken away from us in early in life and um, we, we, we didn't trust even opening to ourselves because many people have been, had their trust taken away from them when they were very young and it can be very, very precious and very, very delicate to start giving to you and reclaiming you, revoking any unconscious contracts you might have had with anyone else who took your energy, perhaps when you were young, perhaps when you were very innocent. You revoke that. You learn how to say no to all of that. You claim your boundaries back and you open to what your delightful inner world really wants course this relates to your inner child, your inner little you, and imagining or connecting with them about what they want, what they desire. It's often very simple, friendship, nature, play, painting, dancing, football, sport, whatever it is. Often very, very, very simple. So really allowing that, and then allowing that innocence, if you have a partner, 
or a lover or a connection, a person you want to open that sensuality with, allowing that innocence with them. Allowing them to also have that sweetness, that innocence where you both can explore together. Play together. Play is a really big key. Have a look at your diary and see how much play is in your diary. And if there isn't much play, and that can be anything from a walk to playing with a dog to uh, dancing to um, painting to whatever play is, means for you. It'll mean different things for different people. Some people it's playing a board game or, or, or playing a game online or what, whatever it is. Play, but watching out for the short-term or long-term pleasure because if you're online for six hours with your game, it may be soothing you, but is it really enlivening you? So really finding out what is going to enliven you and allow that. And so really my biggest thing I'd like to say is having compassion. Having compassion for you and slowing all this down and finding little ways, maybe three little ways a day, creating the vision of what you want when you're moving towards and doing some little things each day that can be really little but it might be that you put an outfit you on you like, you have a, a little walk outside, even just a little walk can be profound if you if you're finding you're always indoors working. Um, keeping your journal, making a little list. And the thing about making a little list and, and, and a personal list, you might have your working list, but if you have a little personal list of uh, checking in that you're keeping pleasure, sensuality your senses a priority and then really starting to explore what are my values, what are my needs, what are my wants, what do I like to smell, taste, touch, see, hear and allowing that to come in with movement, with moving your body, with opening your body, with breath. Ultimately relaxing your belly, softening your tongue, opening your heart and allowing that sense of breathing in and breathing out, coming back always to you. You are a huge universe. You are enormous. We often don't realise that because we get so busy with our preoccupations. But if you can allow that sense of coming back to your breath, coming back to you, connecting with you, feeling you, So I'm hoping that uh, there's something here for you today. Uh, you're very welcome to uh, send me questions or thoughts. I have a course, starts tonight, it's four weeks, uh, a bridging course with, about deep listening and creating this affectionate, affirmative space with another person so you can really hear each other. It's a closed group for four weeks. And um, yeah, so... Uh, do stay in touch. I have a lovely group online on Facebook called Love in the Time of Covid. And uh, I think this is the thing. Find other like people. Find other like groups. Give yourself your daily practices and your monthly rituals that help you feel connected and fun-filled and pleasure-filled. Declare yourself a free being. Let yourself say no to what you don't want to say, don't want in your life and let yourself say yes what you really want and uh, give yourself compassion this is a slow process we're not an event we don't just get somewhere we're on a journey and that can keep changing your needs and wants can keep changing so if something has gone and you think oh my goodness you may be surprised how it emerges again with some gentleness and some compassion and if you're worried about any of this stuff yeah. talk to someone older than you who you feel you can connect with because they will have seen the mystery of life going up and down and changing and that can really help you to kind of realise that it's all okay it's all okay take it one day at a time one moment at a time so lovely to see you I will see you next month and I'm wishing you a lovely lovely day and take good care bye